What's up guys? Good morning. We're about to go out and do chores, but first I'm enjoying my kind of still warm coffee. And I wanted to show you guys something that I'm very, very excited about. This has been in the works for a while now. And some of you have already stumbled upon it, <laughs> you go-getters. Um, you've already noticed that this changed, but we just kind of soft launched it this week and didn't announce it to work out all the kink. Our new website is up. So we have, our website is completely redesigned now, just kind of to reflect the changes in our life as we have come here to our new farm. And the really exciting part of this is that our blog is now fleshed out and functional and will be regularly updated. So like here, um, where we have different subjects, like here's gardening, and you can find a lot of the topics that we discuss in videos here in blog posts where you can read them. Um, and, and also some of the older videos that I've done are linked to these blog posts. Which I've wanted to do this for so long, but it was just a matter of getting um, hooked up with the right people that knew how to. I'm I'm not extremely uh, technologically savvy. Um, I am 100% a gardener. But the reason why this was so important to me to have information in writing like this on a website is because this is actually how I best learn. So you guys know I'm really passionate about teaching, specifically about the garden and about growing food and, and the lifestyle that we're living. Um, I love to teach this. It is just genuinely one of the greatest joys of my life. And I love writing and um, I'm so excited. This is this is probably one of my favorite things that we have done so far. It's at www.rootsandrefuge.com. Hey guys, editing Jess here to just break in because I forgot to say something that was really important. Uh, we've actually got a 20% off the whole website promotion going if you sign up for our new email list. We're sending out email updates twice a week. It's just a great way to hear from us and let us communicate directly with you instead of having to go through any of these other platforms uh, to be able to connect with the people that want to hear what's going on with us. So sign up for the email list, get the coupon if you're going to buy anything, please. I would hate for you to miss out on that discount. All right, back to the actual video. And another thing is that with launching the new website with, I think there are something like 50 blog posts up already on this website. So there's lots of reading for you guys to catch up on. Now with the new website launch, we've also moved our shop over with the stickers and magnets. And we are launching our new stickers from artist Wendy Edelson um, with the shop launch. So they're in our new shop. I'll put links to all of this down below so you guys can find it. But these new stickers are so magical. So right here, we've got the cute little snowman and it, it's kind of like spring taking over the snowman. You've got the, the bird sitting on him and he's got the seed packs in his hat. So just perfect for this time of year where we're all kind of like waiting out to the end of, of winter. <sighs> I just want to save those for last. I have a beautiful little cabbage with snow. Um, I love this one. Just the details in these are just extraordinary here. Wendy did an amazing job. Um, okay, and so these last three stickers that she did make me want to write a children's book. Like, when I saw these, I seriously teared up. And I hope that you guys can enjoy these. I mean, I know these are my animals. But first we have Hope. Um, the cow. She's got a, some chickens on her back and just the depiction of this. I have to get Hannah some of these stickers because I got hope from her and I'm just amazed by by this. The next one is Jamie, our little kit cat Jamie, our mischievous cat, which is so funny that she did this one with him because Jamie I don't think I've ever shared this, but Jamie is always knocking stuff over. So it's so funny to see this picture of him like laying on the started seeds. It's it's just like his personality. And the last one, I've already put this on like multiple different things. Bear and Katie dog. I mean, how perfect is this? Like I said, it makes me want to write a children's book. So Wendy's pack is available in our shop. This is actually the last launch of new stickers we're going to be doing for a little while. We're restructuring some things. Uh, we also, our most recent t-shirt designs, I love growing stuff, talk to me about gardening, and I'm a frost tender flower. These are all in the shop as well. And we're actually gonna be moving to quarterly launches. And that is because we have some things in the work right now, moving towards, um, towards the end of this year where we are looking 
at, oh, I don't know how much I'm allowed to say here. We're going to be having a more brick and mortar presence. And with that, we're going to be shipping a lot of different things. So it's not just gonna be stickers and magnets. We're gonna have it where you guys can, can buy a lot of different things from our storefront. So right now, this is sort of the end of this age of the Roots and Refuge sticker thing. We will continue to do stickers and highlight artists in the future, but we're gonna just be doing it a little differently. So this is the last big sticker launch along with our blog available for you guys to check out at rootsandrefuge.com. This is a massive deal to me. I don't, I don't know how to convey that exactly, but for those of you who have been around for very long, you'll know that before I ever had a YouTube channel, before I ever did anything else, writing was really my passion. I wanted to write books and I had written blogs that nobody ever read and uh, written for a magazine. And so to get back to the place of being able to share instruction in that format, it's very important to me. So check that out. We need to go do morning chores. I need to finish this coffee because it is getting very cold. Yesterday morning it was really just like busy and I left some of the milker stuff inside. We got our milker this week. It's been a learning curve. I don't like to admit this about myself, but I will do something that's harder on me, that it takes more actual work, and that is, you know, I'll just do something that's familiar, that's harder, rather than pushing myself out of my comfort zone to do something that's unfamiliar that will eventually be easier. Does that make sense? I have enjoyed hand milking. I do like it. I've enjoyed hand milking. When it was just the one cow, when it was just Hope, she's easy to hand milk. She has really long teats. But milking two, I, I knew that we would end up getting a milker once we had two cows. Um, I got in a wreck when I was a teenager and my right wrist has never been exactly right since then. Like it just hurts real bad, like when the weather changes and stuff like that. And milking two cows was really starting to aggravate that. So I'm glad that we ordered the milker when we did. I can't milk Helen either, so. I know, Helen has like tiny little teats. Now what they have done is that they actually breed cows to have smaller teats because commercial dairies milk with machines. But if you're hand milking like on a homestead, it's it's very very difficult to milk it really hurts your hands i'm talking about you girly i'm talking about you good morning girls there's a little heffy heffy's not quite fully grafted on hope still being just a little pushy to her when we leave them to themselves so we're still feeding her on the stanchion and keeping her in here but we have her in one of the stalls now where she has inside and outside to give her a little more space so right now we have a generator out here this barn is well ventilated before anybody sees that in here and freaks out but right now you're getting you've got the permit filled out and everything for our power yes we're or essentially just... going to move that temporary pole that's by the well back to the side of the barn, which I have all the stuff to set up that. It's called a meter base mm -hmm. with service. And so I'll get that installed and then I'm going to run a wire back to the well okay. to run from the well. So that's actually, I've got to do some research on like what kind of power requirements the pump requires. Right. So I know what size gauge based off the amount of feet I have to travel. I'm not an electrician, but I learned the hard way. You gotta factor these things in. Yeah. <laughs> so I gotta do a little bit more leg work, but I'm gonna go ahead and get the meter base up and get the permit submitted so they can come out and inspect it. And then that'll put us in line to get the power moved. So he's got the generator out here right now running the milk machine. But I wanted to show y'all Jeremiah's little wittiness. He's very much in <laughs> has an engineering mind. So. We ran into an issue, so I put olive oil on my hands before milking. And even though we do have a milker, and we're going to be using a milker, I well, mean, there's last night I only milked out two quarters of hope, and I was not going to dirty. Yeah, the machine. The machine like we'll still do hand milking, but it's just not. We have the milker as an option, but we'll, there's still the need for hand milking. And also, I was thinking, I think we're going to build some sort of like 
insert in this to be able to milk the goats in the same place instead of having a separate stanchion because we have goats it'll that are kidding. Yeah, it'll be like a little platform and probably some foam thing that will wrap around one of these to tighten it down more on their head. Basically just making removable modifications to be able to use the same stanchion for the goats as the cows. Anyway, milking, I put oil on my hands and I got these little containers like this still sitting out here that you put like dressing in for a salad which works really good except for we have the sand clay on the floor in here and inevitably what would happen is it gets a little dirty and then you have oil and sand on your hands not good for milking actually really bad so Jer I come out here the other day and Jeremiah has bought this bathroom soap dispenser and filled it with olive oil <laughs> to just pump olive oil it's just like you know two pumps it's just like the perfect amount of oil for your hands so since even though we've been using the machine after the girls are done being milked i wipe them off and then i just go ahead and put some oil on their teats and their udder because it's so dry and cold outside that their skin is cracking so essentially just some moisturizer for them i thought that was really clever got it on the amazon <laughs> <laughs> Who'd have thought? <laughs> it works, and it's like the best part is it puts out the perfect amount of oil. I know, it's so clever. Hope you don't drink coffee. Is this water line through here? Yeah. That's hilarious. Right now, all over our farm, there's this trench. <laughs> it's like everywhere. I wouldn't say everywhere. We have 27 acres. It's a few places. It's funny to me. There's just this trench that's just snaking through the pastures, all through the garden. Yeah, getting ready to lay water line. Is this what Noah was talking about when he was stressing out that the cows were getting in? Yeah, see this part here at the beginning? Hold on, I won't be able to carry you that far back. Okay, so Noah's been leaving the tools in the back of the side-by-side, -side, which I don't have a problem with, and he just pulls it in here and parks it, keeps it out of the rain, away from animals, all that. But then I put the trench through because on like Tuesday we're going to drop this water line in and then cover back up then we can put the gravel at the entrances anyways he brought the side by side in and slipped off the trench and like caved it in and then right. the cows tried to rush in after that Noah has heard us talk about how a lot of times like if a cow breaks their leg it's not good. then it's not good I mean like if in some cases it's you end up having to put the cow down and when he heard us talk about that because we had that whole issue getting hope unloaded from the trailer and then I was stressed with how wet it was and the clay in the back was super slippery and Helen was really pregnant and I and hope fell when she was very pregnant with honey That's and true. they couldn't get her up and so I've heard these stories so I'm like super cautious anyway Noah's also, heard like in, me in like second grade or first grade we read this story is in the class about this little boy who had this horse and the horse got out and it ran down to the cattle gate and you know cattle gates are like pipes with like spacing and cattle won't walk over them because they obviously yeah. see trip hazards but horses don't operate the same way and the horse stuck his leg his foot in there and broke it and had to put the horse down it was real sad so like now i'm always like ever <laughs> since then before i ever had a farm or a cow or a horse <laughs> i was like don't put your foot in the hole and break your leg <laughs> It's so funny. I don't this, remember the name of the story. It's so funny. This Somebody stuff. will tell me because they'll remember this story when they were a kid. And, and you were like traumatized yeah, by it? it really was traumatized. It's crazy the things that stick with you. And like we're pretty chill laid back people. But there are a few things that like Jeremiah and I both are like, no, don't let that happen. <laughs> what in the world? Bless Noah's heart. I didn't know what he was talking about because they dug this trench yesterday after I had was out running errands and stuff. I had no idea what he was Last night he was talking about the, the, the ditch and the cows stepping in the ditch and how he was worried about it. But I just saw it and was like, oh, okay, it's all making sense now. So the milk machine we bought is called a Surge Belly Milker and it's kind of neat. It's a little different than other milkers. It, you hook this belt thing around the cow and the 
the point of this is that the milker hangs down under the teat so it doesn't have a lot of long piping that the milk runs through, um, which makes it easier to clean. You don't have to do as much sterilizing by using your vacuum pump to sterilize. You can clean it all with a brush. It's actually older technology and we bought one that's refurbished. We really like it. We had some troubleshooting. We had to learn here that you have to hold the lid down so it can develop a vacuum seal and, and build pressure before you hang it underneath and individually hook each cup to each teat. So far it's going really great. Uh, we haven't separated Hallelujah yet like so here. I kind of have to hold one of these on to right there. That's her favorite teat. She really favors that one. So it's kind of a little empty. So I have to hold it to get started and then quickly take it off because there's not a whole lot of milk in there. But then we milk out the rest with the milker. And so far, it's going really well. Helen currently is giving about a half a gallon because we still have not separated hallelujah at night and hope is giving about two and a half gallons every morning um we have been giving more and more of that to heffy but uh, overall we're really happy with how things are going in the dairy all right i'm taking the milk in just gonna pop by here and just say hello to the chickens how picturesque is this the barn in the background I just feel like it makes our farm look like a legit farm. And we moved the chickens over here to higher ground because they were down there where it was a little lower and wetter. So now that you come down the driveway and it's like the chickens with the barn as a backdrop. Pretty majestic. Hello chickens. Hello chickens. I need to get the eggs, but there looks to be one girl laying. There was two in there earlier. Back out and get them in a little bit when my hands aren't full of a heavy milk pail. When this milk pail has all the milk in it, which we haven't started to separate Hallelujah yet. So she's still with um, Helen overnight. We'll separate her soon. I'm going out of town for this night. So probably when we get back, She's two, she was two weeks old yesterday. Y'all, look at this adorable little children's wheelbarrow I found. I got this at Tractor Supply. I mean, I, I don't, it's not the most high quality toy. This is plastic, but it was really cute. My kids actually want to help with stuff like that. So I think I found that little wheelbarrow and bought it. It was less than $20 and um, my, my boys will actually help if they've got tools that they can maneuver so i thought that was kind of cute all right guys well upon editing this video i just realized that i forgot to finish it thank you for hanging out with us today uh please go check out our new website www.rootsandrefuge.com check out those blogs let us know what topics you'd like to see covered i'm really excited to have a format to easily share recipes that's something i'm very excited about but anything that you're wondering that you'd like to see more of we'd love your feedback make sure you sign up for our email list and you will get sent that 20 percent coupon code for anything in our shop right now and the sign up is on the website thank you i bless you until next time